Hi, it's Jen from Shabby Fabrics. We have a new series for you. This is called the Easy Piece Table Runner Series, and we're starting with the May Runner. Now, our goal for this series is if you love piecing, this is absolutely for you, and we put in just a touch of applique at the ends, but of course, that can be optional. You might want to do just the center portion and not do any applique at all. Of course, kits are always available, but you could be using your own fabrics. Be sure to download the Easy Piece Table Runner. Again, this will be for May. We'll be having one for every single month of the year, and we'll always be doing the month ahead. So in the month of April, we'll be releasing the May project, so you have plenty of time to make that, to make and display for the entire month of May. Um, and one of the things I love about this particular block is it looks complicated, but we're gonna show you a really simple way to make easy piecing look complicated, but this is easy enough even for a beginner. Now, if you are completely new to quilting, I do encourage you to first go watch our Learn to Quilt series where you're learning the most basic things, the most basic things about pressing, precise cutting, and of course, quarter inch seam allowances and all of the things that go into good, strong piecing that makes your blocks come out exactly the way that you hope to. So I will be skipping through some steps because again, this is not a learn to quilt uh, series, but these are easy projects if you do have some basic quilting skills. So once you get your project downloaded, um, we're just telling you right there what you'll need to be cutting. We've cut everything out ahead of time. This is going to be the disappearing nine patch block. And you're just starting off making a simple nine patch. And I think the overhead camera can see this right here. And I've laid out those squares. They're cut to five inches. Of course, that'll all be on your download. So you don't need to worry about writing that down. You'll be making three of these nine patch blocks. They're just five inch squares. And as you would expect with any project where you're sewing a nine patch, You'll be right sides together, sewing a quarter inch seam allowance, and I always encourage pressing to the dark. Again, right sides together, quarter inch seam allowance, press to the dark. Same with this row and this row, and sew those together, pressing the seams either all to the top, all to the bottom, or open as you prefer. It really doesn't matter. We've pieced that ahead of time. And by, way, by the way, these gorgeous fabrics are Emma's Garden from Maywood Studio. I have loved this collection since it came out, and we have lots of projects actually that coordinate with this table runner. So once you have your nine patch put together, and then remember, remember that the block started at five inches. So at this point, these are finishing at four and a half. So I'm going to lay this out. I've got everything nice and pressed, and I'm going to cut this exactly vertically and rotate it 90 degrees and cut it again exactly in half. That's how you make the disappearing nine patch block. So using my creative grid, I love this ruler, it's two and a half inches wide and there's a really neat, in fact I'll turn it this way, dash line right here where my quarter inch is. If this is four and a half inches, and it is, we're going to cut exactly in the middle so you're going to be measuring over two and a quarter. This is two and a half. So I'll be putting my dash line right on that seam allowance. Let's measure twice and we're gonna cut right up that middle. Now without disturbing my project, I'm just gonna rotate and I love not having to disturb anything. I find the fewer times I lift my project when I have to cut it or cross cut it, the more accurate and the more precise and the less stretching happens. So that's why I love to not disturb the fabric and not pick it up unless I absolutely have to. And again, I'm gonna measure two and a quarter inches. So I'm putting that dashed line right on my seam and we'll give that a cut this direction. Now, and we include instructions of course in our download. We'll just show you what that looks like. It's, I think it's three pages here actually uh, four pages because there's also the applique. Now, so this is where we are right here. Let's, let's rotate that back so our block looks just like our paper. So this is where we are now. We always try to give you diagrams so that what you're seeing in real life is shown on the diagram. And now look how we just rotate that. See how we just rotated that block out 180 degrees and this block here, we'll rotate that out and that's all there is to making that. 
Wasn't that just a simple kind of a shuffle? Now what we'll do is place right sides together. I'm just going to put a little pin in that one. And again, right sides together. I'll put a little pin. Let's go sew that quarter inch. I do want to sew this block. I love whenever I get a chance to sew. So let's go do this together. And we're going to make one of these blocks together. And you'll make a total of three. So let's take that to the sewing machine right now. And we'll make this block together. So I've got a little starter strip, so I'll get that going. Alright, so let's just remove our pins. You know, we love our applique here at Shabby Fabrics. And as you know, you've seen probably plenty of tutorials and project series we've done as downloads where there's not so much piecing. So this is absolutely, we want to get back to our, our love of piecing. I know you love it too. And it's good to keep that skill sharp because I know when I haven't pieced for a while, I don't know if you've experienced this before, but when you kind of get back into piecing, you're like, I, I have to reacclimate to, oh yeah, there's my quarter inch. And then I'm kind of in the rhythm again. So I'm, I'm really excited to be doing this series. And of course, each month, the, um, the applique, of course, is going to change and the pieced block will change. So there's going to be something new to learn every single month. By the way, before while I'm waiting for that iron to heat up, if you have a friend that may be interested in quilting, um, this might be a fun thing to do with a friend. So tag them. And if you haven't already subscribed to our YouTube channel or even our newsletter, I encourage you to sign up. Join us, get on the email list. That way you're always learning about our newest products, our newest videos, some of the coolest notions we have. So let's go over right now and we'll, we'll press that. I, you know, because there's no obvious direction to press that, this is when I often just press open. So I will heat that seam up because it just kind of helps relax everything. And when there's not a direction that is favored by the fabric itself, I tend to just press open. Let's see here, there we go. But I know many people have their own pressing preferences and that's great. So press as you prefer. And let's press this other one real quick. You know, when you first look at this table runner, it's easy to think that, you know, we've got these small rectangles, small squares, larger squares, and it looks much more complicated than it actually is. And I think I love that about certain blocks is they're much more interesting than just a regular nine patch. But they really, as you saw with two cuts and two rotations, there's really not anything more to it. Okay, let's flip that over and press from this side, which is something I like to do as well. I press from both sides whenever I am pressing a seam open. And make sure everything's nice and flat. Okay. So let's look back at our picture and make sure that we're putting our block back together the proper way because I've definitely done that wrong <laughs> before. So let's look here. Now we'll just go right sides together and as you can imagine, I really want that point to come together. This is where I'm going to put my pin on this side, right down my seam. And I'm going to go look for my seam right here. Do you see how I did that? So I make sure that my pin is now coming up. I'm going to come right up in that saddle of that seam. And same here. And I'm doing it where I am staying a quarter inch away so my pin can stay in place 
and my needle will pass right past that. I do not, as a matter of habit, sew over pins. I do not do it. I know there are some people that they're okay with doing that. I've been a little concerned that when my needle potentially hits it, I could create just a little bit of damage to maybe my needle, maybe nick, nick my needle, maybe even damage the inside of my machine. So I've been nervous about doing that. And for that reason, I make sure that I pin um, just shy of that and the needle will pass away from that. So that's just my habit. Sometimes people are like, why don't you sew over your pins? It just makes me a little bit nervous. Um, I have hit a pin before and I did break a needle. Um, and the needle went down inside of my machine and I really kind of had a little bit of a fiasco because I was worried about that damaging. So anyway, enough about that. Let's go ahead and head to the machine. We've pinned this really well along here and we're gonna sew a quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, let's see what we have here. And this is again a seam that's just going to be pressed open. Oh, forgot a pin there. It'll always let you know if you forgot one. That's one of the other things I love about using these patchwork pins is they have a glass head on them. So if you do inadvertently iron over one, which I'm sure I did, it's not gonna melt and make a mess over your fabric. There are less expensive pins that have a wider gauge and they really take this bite out of the fabric. I love the Clover Patchwork pins because they just penetrate the fabric without disturbing the piecing. And again, the glass head can take that heat um, if you do inadvertently iron over one and you're not gonna cause any kind of melting or bleeding onto your fabric. Okay, our block is complete. How fun is that? How easy is that? And you'll simply make three more of those and sew those together. That's it. That's, that's the piecing part of this project. Now the applique. I want to point out something about this because when we first made the project, typically we do the applique ends and then we'll stitch that all down and then we're adding the sashing part kind of on the end of this and then that. But notice how this flower actually goes onto the inner sash, the kind of the sashing. So for that reason, when you cut your background, again, the measurements are all in your pattern, so I won't go into those measurements with you right now. You'll get your background and you're going to go ahead and put the ground and the sashing onto that background strip ahead of time. And that's where the applique will be added. Now I've done a, a bit of the applique ahead of time, but I'm also gonna show you how to do some applique using some basic things such as a light box, um, the applique pressing sheet. But this is the unit we did ahead of time on the applique pressing sheet with the light box. Is that cool or what? I'm not bringing each piece to the background one by one and hoping I get that sight picture right. We've done that all ahead of time and I think that's really, really fun. And of course, now you can position it exactly where you want that to be. And you're just ironing that down as one unit. And you're like, how did you possibly get to the stage? That's what I'm gonna show you right now. So let me move that aside. I always like to, for me, when I'm learning something, I wanna know what the goal is and then show me how to get there. So that's why I like to show you this ahead of time. So let's put that over there for now. I'm done with the spinning mat, of course. So let's just get ourselves some space. We'll bring our light box over. And you're going to see how two tools, actually it's probably four tools, a light box, applique pressing sheet, you need a pressing mat and an iron, and you're going to be able to pre-assemble your project in the exact same way, even if you don't have any crafting or sewing skills. You don't need that. So, by the way, I just noticed it's right over here. 
I do all of my piecing now with this confetti cotton. There's a white, a black, and, an, and a gray. It's frankly all you need to be doing piecing. It's 50 weight cotton. I love this thread. And we do have a coordinating sulky 50 weight cotton. This set is under $24. It's so cute. And it coordinates with all of the fabrics we've selected. So if you do want to coordinate your thread for the applique portion, we have that available as an add-on. So I just wanted to mention that. But let's go ahead and bring our light box over and our applique pressing sheet. You're going to want to have a pressing mat right next to, and that cord's kind of in my way. I'll do the best that I can here. That cord's right there. But we, this is what it first looks like. When you get your kit, all of the applique for both ends will already be pre-fused and laser cut for you. How cool is that? That's a lot of tracing, a lot of cutting that you would have to do yourself. If you might enjoy that type of thing. Uh, I, I do to a certain extent, but I sure love jumping right into the fun of just doing stuff and being able to put it down. So if you too enjoy having everything pre-fused and laser cut, just grab that kit. But we've gone ahead and taken all of the fusible webbing off the back. So these pieces are ready to go and they're laid out on our design board. This is the Lori Holt 10 by 10 inch little design board. And I love it because it's just portable. It just moves with me wherever I go. I can go to the sewing machine and back. And I just, it's got a um, kind of a batting on it. So things aren't sliding around too. I like that as well. My iron is on a medium heat. Our fusible um, applique that we're using here is heat and bond light. It works really well in a medium setting. You don't want to use a hot setting when using fusible webbing, probably with any product. Steam a seam, soft fuse, heat and bond light. I think they all pretty much take a medium setting heat. So be, be mindful of that because when irons get too hot, fusible webbing will fail. So I just wanted to put that out there that the heat definitely does matter. More, more heat is not better in this instance. So this is an applique pressing sheet. And how we'll be using that, we'll be using that along with our diagrams. Now notice there's two, two diagrams here. One is the reverse diagram and one is the assembly. Let's say you're at home and doing this with your own fabrics. You'll make sure you want to use the reverse diagram because these are reverse for fusible applique. That way, once you use this with fusible applique, your shapes will actually be reflected when you lay them onto the background. If you're using our kit, you would be using the assembly diagram only because we've already done that step for you. So for now, I'll put the reverse diagram aside because we will just be assembling that using our assembly diagram. This is the wafer one light box from daylight. It has a varying intensity of light. So you could have that on a dim setting, on a super bright setting, and I've got it on the right setting for our overhead camera, so I won't fiddle with the lighting here, but just know that you're able to vary that lighting to be whatever you prefer. This is this, this, is this um, daylight one. It comes in a medium, which is daylight two, and a really large one for daylight three for larger projects. So this will be fitting, this will be used throughout our entire series. You'll always see me be using the daylight one, throughout the Easy Piece Table Runner series. So let's go ahead and turn this on. And I will be right away bringing my applique pressing sheet on top of this. Now, actually before I do that, let me, let me just walk you through the mechanics of how we make patterns here at Shabby Fabrics. What are these numbers? What are these dash lines? If you've seen our downloads, you already know, but if you're new to this, briefly, let me just explain that one of the reasons we number pieces is the piece that has number one on it means that piece goes down first, followed by piece two, piece three, piece four, and piece five, and so on and so forth. So that's how we like to build things here, um, is, and we like to number things so that you don't have to guess, okay, which piece is furthest in the back, and now try to visualize which piece is above that, and so on and so forth, because you can imagine it'd be very easy to get that wrong. Dash lines simply indicate that right here on the curvature of the handle, for example, that's where it goes behind the flower. And we're just letting you know that that piece will now lie behind something else. So that's just, again, helpful for visual orientation and understanding of, of the layout of how this will work. 
Now, you can do one of two things. Just start ping, laying piece one down. So I have this here, and one is my inner portion, and you can start laying that down, followed by piece number two. And sometimes I like to pull my thing aside and say, okay, my basket will be two, my handle will be three, this will be four, and I kind of visualize that. That's one option. The other option is, I could just go build this butterfly over by itself and kind of put it aside and build this butterfly and kind of put it aside and that is exactly what I do. I would build this flower by itself and peel it off and put it aside and build this flower section by itself and peel it off and put it aside and in the end, bring major elements together. Let's build that cone flower together. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So let's bring that light on. My first piece is eight, nine, 10, and 11. So let's just grab our pieces. Of course, you'll have a visual uh, example that to look at to help you know which piece is which. And if you have any doubt, it's going to fit your footprint perfectly. It's not gonna fit anywhere else. So even if you can't, two colors are close and you're not sure, if it fits that spot, it's the right fabric. So we'll lay that down, followed by the next piece, followed by the next piece, and there's my center. Now I'm just gonna move everything over. You cannot iron on the light box. I wish we could, but we can't. We're just going to gently move that over to the light box and I'm just going to press straight down. I'm gonna leave that there for about five to six seconds. That's what's recommended for heat and bond, light, fusible webbing. This is my Panasonic portable uh, iron. I love it because I don't have a cord dragging across the project and moving pieces potentially. I've had that happen. And that's one of the reasons when I do applique, I love to use a cordless. Because I'd no sooner get things, like especially if it was a larger thing, and I'd go to grab the iron and the cord would just kind of drag across and move stuff. So I love that that is like that. Now I can just let that sit there and cool down and I can move my applique pressing sheet to say, hey, let's go make the leaf section. Let's go do that now. The main thing is you just wanna make sure that you understand which elements go behind and you layer it properly. Or you might say, hey, I wanna go do this butterfly right here and you lay out your butterfly, and you go lay out the pieces. Of course, maybe on a dark section, you wanna brighten up that light box so that you can fully see, and you can. This light box will get so bright that you can even see through black. It's very impressive. So I'll go ahead and turn that off real quick, and I just wanna show you how this just peels off. And now I have one unit and not four. So you can imagine that if I go do my butterfly, and I go do this, and I assemble this, that now I bring all of my major elements back onto my assembly diagram and I just iron them down. And I've filmed many, many other videos where I'm even in more detail about fusible applique. So if you wanna learn more, be sure to, again, subscribe and go look. We have so many videos on applique where we go into even more detail. So once you have your applique done, You'll go ahead and iron that down to the background, and that's when the beautiful thread comes into play. Uh, you can be using a straight stitch, you could be using a zigzag stitch, decorative stitch, or whatever you want. You'll go ahead and applique that down at that point. Now you've got your center portion already pieced, your three blocks, your disappearing nine patch have already been pieced together. You'll simply sew the two ends together, pressing the seams as you prefer, and then you'll go ahead and have your project quilted and bound. And that's really all there is to the Easy Pieced Table Runner series. Again, the piecing will change every single month, and of course the applique will be changing every single month. Be sure to join us next month. We're already actively working on June and July and August and beyond. I hope you enjoyed making this project with me, and I'll see you next time.